So all of us have probably heard that old timers hot rod phrase, you need some back pressure to make power, or if you don't have back pressure, you're not gonna make any torque and your motor's gonna suck. Well, that stuff's completely wrong and I'm gonna explain why. So um, why is back pressure good or bad for your engine? Well, actually, back pressure is always bad, very bad. The reason why is your engine is a, uh, actually an air pump, and uh, a lot of why it makes power is something called volumetric efficiency. So what it needs is uh, the least amount of restriction on the backside to help uh, move the most volume of gas through the engine. So if you do have an uh, exhaust system with a lot of back pressure, it acts like a cork, and it hurts the engine's uh, pumping efficiency. The reason why old timers have said things like you need some back pressure to make power and torque in the past was, well, if you have like a really huge way oversized exhaust, you lose your gas column inertia. Uh, what that is, is um, you need velocity through the system to get good scavenging, especially on the overlap period of a four stroke engine. Uh, so. The, the trick is to get as much velocity through the exhaust with as little back pressure as possible. A lot of that is uh, in the correct sizing of the tubing for your engine. Um, a lot of engines have uh, pretty small exhaust tubing. This is the only stock piece of exhaust tubing I could find. It's actually off our Project Tundra. I mean, it does look fairly big, but it's double walled and the inner tube is actually pretty small. Uh, the reason it's double walled is to retain heat so it lights the cat off a lot faster. A similar size engine is our Project uh, C7 Corvette, and this is uh, one side of it. As you can see, it's a similarly sized engine. The Tundra is actually supercharged, so it actually has more flow demand, but the Corvette has a bigger tube than the Tundra. Now, this is a um, part of a Hooker Blackheart exhaust for the, um, the Corvette, and it is a little bit bigger than stock, but naturally aspirated engine, pretty big tube. So some of the things um, that you wanna do to increase your velocity and reduce back pressure is to have nice, smooth mandrel bends. This is a Hooker Blackheart exhaust for our Jeep project. Smooth mandrel bends, no neck downs, straight flow through and through. This is going to have a minimum of back pressure and really good velocity. Uh, like maybe the Hackmo way is to put some big pipe. Uh, of course, with a big pipe, the back pressure will be very low, but the uh, velocity will be poor. Now, the reason why velocity helps is the moving gas column down your exhaust has inertia, and um, the engine is like a pulsating hot gas generator. So when you have the volume of gas going down the uh, exhaust pipes, when it's at high velocity, it kind of creates a refraction at the exhaust valve uh, during the overlap cycle, and it helps move the fuel-air mixture through the motor. Now, if you didn't have that velocity, um, you know, like it, you would get stagnation and you wouldn't have such good scavenging because you wouldn't have the refraction at the exhaust valve when we're on overlap. You know, how big is too big? It's really hard to say. Um, a lot of it is if you have a uh, highly tuned engine for good volumetric efficiency, particularly if it's uh, naturally aspirated, something like a Honda K motor, it's gonna have like a big cam on the uh, high RPM side in the VTEC and a lot of overlap. Uh, this particular engine is super sensitive to back pressure, so you have to have at least a three inch mandrel bent free flowing exhaust or the engine will lose all kinds of power. And you know, that seems like a huge exhaust to be on the naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder, but it's kind of like the minimum that's needed. Any more back pressure, you can actually uh, damage these K motors. Uh, they have a lot of duration, a lot of overlap. You get back pressure, they start getting what's called reversion in the cylinders. This means incomplete scavenge. Uh, there's hot uh, exhaust gas left in the cylinder. The cylinder doesn't cool well, and you get detonation. So we've seen that uh, 
you know, even a mildly restrictive exhaust on a fully built K motor, the engine detonates, you have to pull timing out, uh, rich in the air fuel ratio, and you lose a lot of power. A lot of guys don't realize this, and um, they don't put a super high flow exhaust on their belt K motor. They actually have uh, blown up their motors. Um, the same can be said with any motor that's built to run at high RPM that has a big cam with a lot of overlap. Uh, back pressure is really bad in that case. Uh, another point of back pressure is often the muffler. Um, in the old days when we were kids, we used to get like uh, turbo type mufflers, they used to call them, and they were like a replica of the uh, mufflers in the turbocharged Corvairs. So they're big in diameter on the inside. They had uh, flow directors and they're reverse flow. And they're kind of quiet for uh, being a big pipe muffler. However, uh, these mufflers kind of reduce power quite a bit. Um, a lot of it's because when you're changing direction inside the muffler can, uh, you're losing velocity. When you have big tubes inside the muffler, uh, you can have low back pressure, but then you lose the velocity by making all the direction changes inside the muffler with those sharp um, 180 degree turns. So nowadays, the best mufflers are what we call absorption mufflers. Um, like this hooker muffler, basically they have a straight through pipe that uh, is perforated. And the uh, perforated pipe is surrounded by like a noise absorbing material like fiberglass or stainless steel. Typically the higher quality ones have stainless steel mesh around the perforated tube, which is resistant to blowout, but the case is filled with uh, fiberglass or rock wool or something that helps absorb those frequencies. So when the um, exhaust is flowing through the muffler can, the uh, big pulses of high amplitude and a little high frequency uh, annoying noise resonances, um, the perforations help break those up and they're absorbed in the, in the uh, material inside the muffler can. If you want to get fancy, you can even calculate the volume of the can and use it as a resonator to cancel out certain frequencies. But if you look, um, you know, it's a straight shot all the way through the muffler. So these absorption mufflers um, are fairly quiet for what they are, considering they're a straight through design with no baffles or anything. And um, if you design them right, they have almost no impact on your power. I guess the last variation is uh, for a turbocharged car. Now, turbocharged cars are a special cat. Uh, they need really low back pressure. A lot of it's because you want to have a pressure differential from the uh, engine side of the turbine wheel to the uh, exhaust side. The more of a pressure differential, the more power the turbine can recover from the exhaust stream and the more power you have to drive your compressor. Uh, so if you have like a, a turbo, a really big free-flowing exhaust with as little back pressure as possible, you know, not even paying attention to velocity can like make the turbo spool a lot quicker and reduce your turbo lag and give you more bottom end that way. Um, so a turbo exhaust usually has a 25 to 50% bigger diameter than um, your uh, naturally aspirated exhaust systems. An interesting fact though is uh, having the pressure differential and really low back pressure does not make the turbine more mechanically efficient. Uh, if you know turbo mechanics and engineering stuff, uh, the turbine is actually more efficient with back pressure, but we're talking about pressure differential and recovering the power to drive the turbine, which is a different thing. So you might be wondering how your catalytic converter uh, affects exhaust velocity, power, and back pressure. Uh, what I have to say is it all depends. If you have a stock engine with uh, variable cam timing or very little um, overlap for emission reasons or both, the chances are a catalytic converter is not going to help hurt your power very much. Uh, the reason is, is uh, you have very little overlap so you don't have to worry about the pressure causing reversion and backflow into your engine. This all changes though if you have a modified engine with a big cam and a lot of overlap. Like we said about the K motor where um, a, having too much back pressure can actually damage it. The uh, same goes with a catalytic converter. 
Um, when you have a really built motor, uh, the back pressure can hurt things quite a bit, even possibly damage the motor. Um, the other thing is um, the brick of the catalytic converter kind of acts as a reflector sometimes and cr can create a reflected wave to go back up the exhaust that can cause dips and uh, weird things in your power band. So you should never take your cat off if it's a street driven car that's totally illegal. But uh, in a race car, yeah, you don't really want to run your cat. Um, there's a few exceptions like uh, German touring cars and other racing classes where you have to have a cat because of the rules. In that case, um, if you notice the DTM cars, the cat is way at the very end of the exhaust, as far back as possible. Uh, this will reduce some of the effects of the reflected wave. And um, if you get the cat big enough and your back pressure isn't too much and it doesn't isn't going to hurt your velocity, then it's okay. But um, race engines are usually better without the cat for those reasons. So to sum it all up, back pressure is never your friend. It's always the enemy. Velocity is good. You want to have the highest velocity with the lowest back pressure. To get good velocity, you have to have nice smooth uh, mandrel bends that don't crush down. You want to try to reduce super tight unnecessary bends and you want to have a good muffler that's a straight through perforated core absorption type and you want to have appropriate tubing size. Uh, where you have to be careful is um, things like catalytic converters. Never take it out if it's a street car, uh, but if it's a race car, you're running a big cam with a lot of overlap, it can be very detrimental and even damage your engine. So that pretty much sums it up. Remember those rules and don't listen to those old farts that are telling you, hey son, that exhaust is never going to work because you need some back pressure. It isn't going to make any torque or no power. Remember what I said. So if you like this content, check out our webpage, MotoIQ.com. Check out our uh, Instagram and our Facebook. And um, so be sure to subscribe. Mash that subscribe button. You can listen to me talk more and you can see my ugly face in more of these videos. See you later.